Okay, let's look at these maps for a second. Okay, so these are commercial grade maps. Uh, basically, you can buy commercial packets of maps. Uh, what I want to do is take take the the texture creation right out of the equation right now. You know that would be a great project is to create some textures for my students in the classroom. I'm going to bring some probably textures in to and that that way we can have just how to apply textures to an area. And then in the later lesson, we could probably look at make, maybe making you know, a set of textures that all go together. So this, this right here represents a, a floor, okay? So let's look at this in a different arrangement. Let's maybe tile these around. There we go. And let's reset my workspace here. So this is what I have. I have the atypical color map. This is a bump map, a normal map, and a spectral map. So when I look at here, uh, as far as the detail that goes into these things, when I zoom in, you know, you can see that already I zoom in about, you know, 300 200 percent I, I see a lot of blockading going on this one you know same these are all the same resolution all the same sp space layout and if we look at these if you're totally new to textures this is at a 2048 ratio okay so we're gonna start out small and think 2048 for right now but the resolution is 240 okay so keep that in mind these are all really high res images as long as they're 2048 now you can go as high as 4096 but it's really you know bad etiquette to kind of go that way right now the sky is the absolute limit because we're gonna bake all these textures into one giant massive texture anyway so you know one texture runs the show per se all right, so now this one's going to be handling the color aspect. This one's going to handle the bumpiness, and this one's going to handle the reflections from the bumpiness. And the difference between these two bumpinesses is, if that's a word, but uh, this one, if I look straight onto the texture, I'm going to see the level of bumpiness that occurs. And that's it. If I look straight on, if I look at any, if I'm running up to the wall at an angle in any way, I'm not going to see too much bumpiness occur. This one handles light in a different manner. I can run up to the wall sideways or the floor sideways and see the bumpiness that occurs. I could be on top of it. Uh, it handles light in several different dimensions. So just to kind of sketch this out for you, you're like, no, don't sketch anything out. Shut up. <laughs> Let's see, 72. And so we have our wall. Or let's treat it as a floor. We have our floor. Wow. Leveling occurring there. And what will happen is with the gray map up here above this one. Okay. With that one, what I'm going to have is the ability to look straight onto the surface. And I'm going to see bumps. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to see these caps. Now, with this one, I can see at an angle that goes like this, or like this, or like this, okay? So I'm going to see at all different angles, but with the other one, not so much. This one's a little easier on the system. Some game engines don't even support this, so keep that in mind. In nowadays 2010, most game engines do handle a normal map. Those who don't, die quickly. Okay, so that's the explanation of mapping. Uh, so, how do we apply these in Maya? That's what we're going to be doing. And I'm just going to be using this as a demonstration right off the bat to kind of how to map those systems out to uh, these, the, hyper, uh, the rendering editor's hypershade. So, we're going to build maybe 
floor one. Okay. So if I want to concentrate on one area, I can click on this and click here and it'll only give me floor one. So this is a very quick way to kind of toggle between things. Right now I can get the entire, just the tree itself, all its breakup. And then later on, as it gets more and more in depth, I have the ability to get right into the camera level. So we're probably only going to go at this level right now. How we grab textures in here. And this is where we start thinking about projects and how they work. Uh, right now I have a level. So what I'm going to do is create a new project. And the new project is going to go onto the desktop. And call it level one. Oops. Choose that. Level one. How about room one at the top? And I could have all of these. If I hit use defaults, it'll make all of these. But seriously, I don't want all of these in here. I just want to hit accept. Because when I export this out, it's going to export all the maps and textures for me anyway. So I'm not really concerned about, you know, having a million folders out there. I want to keep it simple, stupid. All right. Another thing, the system is really slow. So I'm going to do something. Edit, delete by type history. We'll eliminate all history on the object. Then I'm going to save scene as, and I'm going to save it within this room. So here's There we go. All right, those textures that I have, I want to put those in that, that same folder. Okay, so in here, on my hard drive, on my desktop, I have textures, and I have these, these textures right here. Control-C, or Command-C, and then in here I got Level 1, Room 1, and Edit-Paste. go cool back in Maya make sure I save that there we go I just want to make sure everything's all saved out so that that's the organization process it's probably the most boring stage of the actual development but it needed to be addressed and I got to introduce textures too so on to the next video